This is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Live from the camp. Live the camp. Uh huh. This is Hi, Real yeah. Fans Real Talk. talk. Real Fans Real Talk, we as real as you thought. Real Fans Real Talk, we the illest of course. Real Fans Real Talk, we the illest of course. Real Fans Real Talk, we as real as you thought. Real Fans Real Talk, reporting live from the camp. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez You heard what I said, we elite Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat Keep us in your topics and uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9 For the older folks, so even if you younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursday. 16 year career, a lot of guys don't get past three or four. At what point did you know, like, I've got to start transitioning what I'm going to do after this? Because you're still a very young man when mm -hmm. you're leaving the league. Right. Uh, so it's funny, right? So I had back surgery my second year in the league, and this year we went to the finals, and pretty much the doctor told me after my surgery, or before my surgery, like, you probably gonna pay, play too much longer. Like, your back is wow. that messed up. You you got bulging discs at like four different levels. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't see, you have to get your back fused eventually, so he's telling me, right? So, that's the first time where I had that kind of reality, like, wow, I really might not play forever. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's my yeah, that's, yeah, first, that's my started, first man. like, I'm, I'm 20 years old. Like, damn, I really might not play forever. So that's when I first started to, like, pay attention to business a little bit more, whatever. I realized that the financial people I had at that time wasn't the right people. So I transitioned to a better, you know, to a better person and different things like that. And after that, you know, obviously my career took off. You know what I'm saying? I was yeah. able to get past the injuries and all that. But I always had an entrepreneurial spirit, right? You know what I'm saying? I always wanted to be a part of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I used to look at different deals that I wanted to do. And, you know, I would send them to my financial advisor. And the guy that I had at that time is like most advisors, right? He was a little different because he was different because he was good. And, you know, he really helped me save money and all that. But he was the same because a lot of financial advisors, number one, um, they say no to every deal, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's a good deal or bad deals because they have their set ways of like how they like to invest and stuff like that. So throughout that time, I missed out on a couple different investments that I, <laughs> you know, vitamin water was something I bought, something I wanted to do. Uh, Investing oh, wow. in Google when it was like cents, you know what I'm saying, with some things that I wanted to do. But when I would bring it to him, he would just tell me like no and give me an explanation. But I had I couldn't fight it because yeah, I didn't know nothing. Yeah, at the time. You know what I'm saying? I didn't I didn't do any of my homework. I didn't do any of my research. It was either some something somebody told me or whatever. You know, something like Google. God bless the dead. My big cousin called me and was like, Yo, you gotta buy Google and you gotta buy <laughs> uh, this gun uh, company stock. He's like, You gotta buy it. He right. Both of them is through the roof. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Google split, this gun's still killing it. You know what I'm saying? But when he told me, I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? My financial advisor said to me, you got Berkshire Hathaway. And now if you know, if you know anything about Berkshire Hathaway stock, that stock is like $40,000 per share, mm. right? But it pays no dividends. Mm. All it is is just something that you just show right. in your portfolio and you yeah, can leverage well, against. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? But it's not money. But I don't know that. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? I had to learn this down the line. So saying all that to say is, as I got older, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, business was one of those things that I started to look at outside of hoop. And then I started getting interested in things and it kind of made me on mind just to start to transition of like, what's next? Yeah. Like, how are you going to continue to live this kind of a lifestyle? Right. How are you going to continue to push your there's family? There's a big drop a once thing. you stop getting NBA checks. And it's <laughs> huge, man. And if you're not ready, and that's what's, that's what's unfortunate because a lot of athletes, you know, especially guys that play a long time, you know, it's hard to transition out of that. You go from yeah. 20 years of, you know, every time you make a phone call, they pick up first ring to when you're done, they might not pick it up. At all. You know what <laughs> yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's trouble. People chasing you, and now you got to turn around and you got to start chasing people. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's a tough transition, but, you know, I was able to find, which is my next passion, is was cannabis, you know what I'm saying, in that time, you know what I'm saying, of just educating myself through reading the newspaper. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Reading the newspaper when I was playing in Denver, reading about, you know, all the benefits of cannabis and, you know, realizing that what we was taught, because we all from the same area, was all a lie. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? It was all propaganda. Like they really made us believe that cannabis was a gateway drug and it right. did yeah. this and it did that. And when that and wasn't that's true, not true, that's not true at all. all. You know what I'm right. saying? What they did was they pretty much set us up and, you know, and made it something worse than what it was. And then they had the audacity to lock us up for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All right. So, you know, once I found cannabis and, you know, I can go into the story in a little bit, but, you know, when I was able to find that, I ain't going to lie, it it, it, it it got me to the point where I wasn't even thinking about the game no more. I just wanted to do this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I wanted to help people. Because it, 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 one, I mean, it just business-wise, it's, it's very lucrative. Um, but I actually, uh, like like a year and a half ago, I wrote an article in uh, Thousand Watts magazine uh, about the effects of marijuana and, and um, within the sports world. Mm -hmm. And I started finding all of these athletes that were smoking marijuana while they were playing. Um, and it was crazy to me because, I mean, everybody knows about Michael Phelps because he got right. caught in uh, Usain Bolt. But Mike Tyson uh, was smoking. I know JR. Uh, and so like so many athletes smoke now, but I mean, but it's on the bad substance list. Right. But it's actually really good as far as healing purposes. Right. And uh, I mean, I think uh, now the league a little bit is kind of opening their eyes more because you know, and I know uh, you you actually been doing some stuff with the league and trying to uh, open their eyes to to the mm -hmm. marijuana and, and the benefits of it yeah. as far as for physically healing your body and mentally healing your body. So hopefully they get to that to that point where it's off completely off the band substance because I mean after a while I mean once it's legalized throughout the, the country I mean realistically it's kind of crazy to still have it on the band substance list. Right. right. I don't say how can you do it when you know players can consume liquor you know what I'm saying right. once it yeah. comes federal legal like I don't see how the league has anything to stand on at that point yeah like how can you deny me medicine and you know that's even one of my fights when I talk to the league now or talk to people from the league is I'm like players play in 16 cities in the NBA that cannabis is medicinally legal. Yeah. These kids, they pay taxes there, they live there. Yep. Why is it that you feel you have the right to deny yeah. them medicine? Because this is a medicinal. They have to go to the doctor, get a prescription, and then the prescription says yes. they can use. Mm -hmm. Who are you to tell them they can't? Yeah. They can't. Well, you, you did a great job of highlighting that. I think it was uh, two years ago when right. you had the article for Players Tribune. Yep. And you talked about, obviously, your knowledge of, of cannabis coming later on, but they prescribed you pain medication for your back. Correct. Right? And you, like you mentioned, you're very fortunate to, look, no addiction. I just use it whenever I could. There are a lot of guys who that becomes their downfall. Right. right? Hall of Famers like Brett Favre have yes, talked sir. about their addiction. And yet the league won't allow medical marijuana. It's, it's highly, obviously, like you said, it's highly addictive and it's very dangerous. You know what I'm saying? It's a slippery slope. Right. You know what I'm saying? You get these guys to the point where they literally cannot cope without it. You know what I'm saying? I had a seven-year run where I used anti-inflammatories two in the morning, one at night for seven straight years. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, at the end of the day, what the effects it is going to have on my liver and kidneys is like, I don't know right now because I'm still whatever. But yeah. it's, it has some effect. You know what I'm saying? It definitely damaged it because during that time, I didn't know the importance of how much you have to flush meaning drinking hella water. Yeah. I didn't drink a lot of water during that time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there, I, I, there's potential that I will have some form of side effects from that. But now what I try to explain to the league is that now think about it, there's alternative ways of medicine. And, and cannabis and what's dope about cannabis is that it's not only smoking. Like, get that out of your mind. It's yeah. so many different delivery systems for cannabis and right now. And that's a lot of it, because people, because once you hear smoking weed, they just think, oh, it's like they got a blunt in their hand. Bong rips. So, yeah. But the, you know, we so past that, that, bro. Yeah, it's it's past, we could do edibles, it's, we yeah. could do oils, we could use topicals. Mm -hmm. There's so many different things. Bath bombs. Oh, there's so much stuff that we that we can infuse with cannabis now to deliver you that same effect. You know what I'm saying? Without actually sitting smoking. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So that's one of the biggest things we have to just get people past that and realize like just because we say that our athletes can use cannabis doesn't mean that they're just sitting in their car yeah, getting stoned before the, the game. Right before right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Going, it don't even make sense. You know what I'm saying? Like like we said talking like, you know, we we the four hundred greatest athletes in the world, right? Yeah. Why am I gonna decide when I gotta go guard Kevin Durant or Kyrie or Brian that I'm gonna sit in my car 
and yeah. blow. That's right. right before the game. It don't make sense. That's just yeah. like I'm sitting. I'm like you. You trust that I'm not gonna sit and get drunk before the game. Yeah. So why you don't think? Why yeah, can't I get that fact. same yeah. courtesy yeah. Right. with smoking weed? Yeah, I'm I might smoke after the game. After yeah, after the, the game, I'm gonna blow it down. Yeah, I'm gonna blow it down after the game. After you got the bus with Yeah, right. You need that. You need a But it's good, and that's what I'm saying. It's funny. I met one of the owners I talked to. Um, I was asking him. You know, I was telling him. Well, he he was telling me that he knew I was in the space, like that they already knew in the league while I was playing that I was already in. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm saying? Cause I didn't know. I thought I was secretive, right? <laughs> and like he literally said to me, he was like, "Yo, I mean, obviously I can't say this publicly, but he was like, I would much rather you guys after the game go home, light up a joint, and sit on your couch and play video games and be at practice the next day, compared yeah. to the, what Out we do night. now yeah. is we start drinking at the game, we at the bar drinking, we mm-hmm. in the club, no shirt off." <laughs> having a great time, <laughs> potentially getting behind the wheel of the car drunk, yeah. taking that risk, getting and, home. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And then, okay, we do make it home. Now, next day, we hung over. We can't be all we can be, bro. Right. There's no medicinal benefits in cannabis, you know, excuse me, um, and, and, and liquor. So yeah. it's just like, you know, what, what would you rather have? And he literally said that. He said, I would much rather yeah. God, go home, light him up a joint, and sit there. And, be, and get ready for the next day. What do, what do you say to uh, guys like Stephen A. Smith, who have a huge issue? You know, his big stay off the weed. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do, what do you say to, to Stephen A. Smith? So you know, I think you know one thing I'm gonna say about Stephen is like you know, he know what time it is. You know what I'm saying? He's no dummy. Yeah. He know what's up with the culture. I think that's all like a little gimmick. You know, for people to talk about, and you right. know, he know what time it is, bro. You know, he too tapped in. He too tapped in to be to sit up there. Now, I think the thing that people are missing is like his point is he's trying to say is like, why would you put your career at risk right. and yeah. put your money at risk to actually smoke? And I agree with him on that. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? I, I totally agree about that. You understand? But all the other stuff, it kicked my homeboy, like all that, I think that's all part of his character right. when he do all that. Because right. he understand, he know what's going on. He know that cannabis is medicinal. And I think he kind of alludes to that just a little bit. But, you know, I think his point is like, why would you put your livelihood on the line? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To smoke when the league is telling you not to. You know what I'm saying? And with NFL guys, like, you know, the guys that actually do get caught, you know, they do have somewhat of an issue. Right, and I'm more from the standpoint of like finding out why Josh Gordon keeps going back. Yeah. It's a reason why, because no sane person would do it. Yeah, right. Because in the, even you know yeah. NFL, NFL, uh, MLB, they got the best uh, drug testing right. because they get tested one time a year, yeah. one time. You know what I'm saying? So you know when it's coming. You pass that one test and you smoke yeah. all 17 yeah. games, 16 right. games. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. NBA is totally different. They test us for random times. You know, we don't know yeah. when it's coming. You know what I'm saying? So I always say, like, the guy that get caught, man, I'm like, my thing is, like, I ain't going to sit and blame him. I'm like, dog, what you really going through, bro? Let's talk. Let's yeah. talk about this. The you know NFL, what I'm the NFL yeah. did make a recent tweet because um, I remember last year, remember Eric Reed kept randomly coming up. Yeah. Um, but you're right. A lot of times these guys only have to pass it that one time and then just move yeah. on from it. Um, if you're able to, because I know this is still an ongoing dialogue, the David Stern meetings, what mm-hmm. were those conversations like? Because he spoke very highly of you afterwards, mm-hmm. and he openly said, I think we're moving to a point where we will remove this off the banned list. Yeah, it was just it was the same thing. It was just, you know, pretty much educating them. You know what I'm saying? Just really having the same conversation I had with, you know, with most people. Like, you think that is like common sense or common knowledge is not common. You know what I'm saying? People don't realize, you know, the real benefits of cannabis. And, you yeah. know, even talking to him was kind of examples I was just giving you guys. You know, I was just, just talking to him like, you know, which player would you rather, you know, you know, have, you know, a guy that drinks and drinks and drinks to cope and calm himself down after the game because you got to think like we're the world greatest athletes like I trained yeah. so hard Bron trained so hard Bron can play four hours not the little hour we play in the game <laughs> yeah. you understand what I'm saying so, and they, half every yeah, bro. So, listen, <laughs> so you sitting there after the game though you still like you still on edge yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying like you mellow still out, like what's next so now you trying to mellow out what you go to you go to the liquor so what I explained to him I was like now with CBD and with them changing all the delivery systems and stuff like that, and, and even with THC, I'm like, just imagine after the game, you walk around, the trainer walks around, and he gives out edibles. He yeah. gives out gummy bears. 
right. vegan gummy bears, sugar-free, whatever <laughs> you want to make it. But this gummy bear has 100, 150 milligrams of CBD and 5, 10% milligrams of uh of uh, uh, THC, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So now you give them that, you know what I'm saying, with the delivery system, whatever, you know, within, you know, 15, 30 minutes, now I'm starting to relax. Right. Mm -hmm. Starting to cool now, you know what I'm saying? Now my body's healing from within because I got the CBD in it, working with my endocannabinoid system, you know what I'm saying? So I'm on my way. When I uh, when I went to uh, to the, the medical marijuana spot in Manhattan and I was talking to the doctor there, and he was just telling me, he's like, I don't like to prescribe pills. I don't like to prescribe anything. I will prescribe marijuana over any drug. Right. You know, j just the, because the, the, the side effects of doing all that other stuff on your body after a while, whereas marijuana, you know, it's, it's Bro, not. Bro, you got TV. Look at the commercials, dog. The commercials is like, okay, try this drug or use this drug. And it's like, you know, all of us sitting playing high five right. on the court yeah. and all that. And then our girl right. skipping away. Yep. And then it's like. Uh, side effects, yeah. instant death, internal yeah, bleeding, I was, I was eyeballs said, falling minute, out. Like, what just happened? <laughs> Anal leakage. I don't want none of this. Yeah, but you, but you sitting there like only thing is my yeah. eye hurt, <laughs> my hip hurt. Like, what? Right. when did it now, go there? I might when... die, bro. Yeah, nah, I ain't trying to die for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my hip, oh, yeah. cuz. Like, what happened? You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, man. Do, like, do you feel the league is any closer? Because Adam Silver seems to be very progressive in his thinking. So do you I think, think so, man. I think I think there's a lot of uh, companies, including my company, that is talking to the league. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to have these progressive conversations to get them more and more comfortable, so that we can in introduce a product. Um, the product that I want to get into the league for the players is a topical first. You know what I'm saying? I want them to feel uh, the 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 pain relief that I feel from this cream. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It took me almost 18 months to, you know, to fully formulate this cream. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to play in the big three, you know, the first yes. two right. years mm -hmm. because of this cream. You know, um, one of the reasons why I've, I retired is I, you know, I'm, I'm bone on bone on my right knee or whatever from a, a botched knee surgery I had in Denver. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I had swelling in it constantly. Like anytime I do something, it swells, now it hurts, I can't do nothing. So it really forced me to stop playing at that point. But ever since I've been using this cream, man, all the swelling's gone, hasn't come back, live a very active lifestyle, no issues. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's amazing, you know what I'm saying? And I want, I want the players to be able to use this because, I, because we deal with a lot of common pain stuff. It's not yeah. the stuff that we, we take these drugs for simple stuff. You know what I'm saying? And we, I think that we could be using the cream and not expose ourselves to those harmful things. If, if you had known, um earlier as far as the business side of things would you have done you know like say uh, ricky williams right. who was one of the top guys in the nfl but left early yeah. because of because he you know he wanted to smoke and then he got into the business and started open up would is that something you would have done um you know it's hard to just say that but you know the the thing about it is like it just depends on the timing right because when he was using there was no other alternative but to smoke yeah there was nothing right. else there was no other vehicles of getting you the medicine, right? It wasn't no vapes. It wasn't no nothing. All you 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 knew he was blowing. You knew he was taking bong groups. You know what I'm saying? By the time I came up, you know what I'm saying? I could have went a different approach. I could have said, "Yo, I'm using this cream, and it got THC in it, and look, it allows me to go out. It allows me to feel great. You know what I'm saying? Or I'll take these edibles. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like." You know, if I had that opportunity, you could push that conversation a lot further mm -hmm. than the other thing. Because like I said, all I look at is like whenever you think about cannabis, you think of like two or three things. You think of someone sitting around smoking. You think about the police locking you up. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. think about being in jail. You There's too about, much of a negative conversation it's too much on, on marijuana, and it's not that. And it's not that. You know what I'm saying? I look at it like, you know, this is going to take, you know, for sports, for, for professional sports, it's going to take one of the main dudes to come mm -hmm. out. Yeah, and it's going to be one of those guys like, I think it's got to be one, you know, if Tom Brady, imagine Tom Brady said, yo, I smoke. The NFL They're changing that again. policy. Yeah, it's right? over. That's it. It's Man, over right Aaron Rodgers came out. I mean, him and Aaron Rodgers said, yo, I blow, bro. That's how <laughs> I cope. I blow. <laughs> I sit. I go through the footage. I, I go right, through yeah. all my game film. It allows me to focus. It allows me to, what? Yep. It'll change the game. Aaron what? Rodgers probably smoked backwards, too. He seemed like a backwards Bro, <laughs> it'll change the game, dog. Yes, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But... You know, a lot of times these guys, their hands are tied because they have all these other endorsements and stuff that they can't mess up, but they would be surprised yeah, that man. this, I'm telling you, like people don't feel the way they used to feel about cannabis. And I'm, I mean, because, 
you know, obviously I'm now considered the, the, the weed guy, the marijuana, the cannabis guy, whatever. So I get all kind of conversations. You know, my kids play on soccer teams and horseback riding. And literally that's all they want to talk to me about. It's yeah. about the industry, how to invest, what's going on in it. You understand what I'm right. saying? That these are the people like that most people are worried about. This is middle America. The yeah. people that bring the kids to the game and we're worried like, oh my God, what if my son knew Steph, you know, Steph right. Curry smokes weed? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but I'm telling you, bro, like, you know, in my walk, man, like, it's very accepting. Like I said, you know, my grandma, you know, people at their church and stuff like that, you know, they, you know, they using the CBD, yeah, they're they using get, the vapes. Yeah. Right, right. Now, I mean, you, you wrote about your grandma in the piece. Talk about that, man, because that, that was a very interesting point of the story with, mm -hmm. you know, how it's helped her with yeah. her aches and pains. I mean, she flipped me for real, man. Like, you know, even though I was re so like I said, 2010, I signed as a free agent from the Knicks. I went to uh, to Denver. Um, you know, I used to always read the newspaper because George Carl was my coach at the time, and he's one of the type coaches when you win, it was because of him, and when you lose, he yeah. always blaming somebody, <laughs> right? And I used to always read the newspaper just to hear what he was talking about and everything. But, you know, every time I pick up the newspaper, it's always something in there about cannabis benefits or the licensing, whatever they was going through, because it was one of the first states to, you know, fully make that step. Mm -hmm. And two days before my grandma came to see me, I was reading an uh, article about the benefits of cannabis and glaucoma, or whatever the medicinal benefits. And when she got to my house, you know, you know, took her downstairs, she had me bring a, a bag back upstairs, and she opened up one of the biggest pill boxes I've ever seen in my life, right? And she just started taking all these pills. And the athlete in me at the time was like, Grandma, you take mad vitamins. I'm like, I yeah. take vitamins with you going in. I think everybody grandma too. Yeah. <laughs> she like, boy, these ain't vitamins. Yeah. <laughs> she like, this is for this. This is my high blood pressure. This is for this, that, the third. Yeah. And she said glaucoma was one of the things. And I was just like, Grandma, you got glaucoma? She's like, yeah, my eyes, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, I was reading about cannabis. And then she finally was like, well, what is cannabis? And I was like, marijuana weed. She's like, reefer? <laughs> you what? She was with the reefer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she's like, they still say reefer. She's like, boy, I ain't smoking no reefer. So I'm like, Grandma, I'm telling you, this is a special reefer. It's magical <laughs> reefer. Like, you got to try it. She like, no. So next day came home from shooting around and she was in pain again. And you know, we had a conversation again and she was just like, you know what, today I'm in so much pain, I'll try anything. Wow. And uh, my boy went to the store, it was like a $700 transaction because I wasn't a smoker. So he brings a tree back with a volcano, a vaporizer thing. Mm. So we volcano, vaporize <laughs> it for, put it in the big bag, <laughs> take it in the garage and she starts smoking it. And uh, she had it like three or four times, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, all right, Grandma, I think that's, that's enough, because I, I don't you, even know. You, you like it right? a little too much. Yeah, right? I don't know. She easy, took easy, too easy, much. Easy, I'm like, all right, Grandma, that's enough. So I'll take it downstairs. Um, I took a nap. Woke up hour and a half later. I was going to jump in the shower. I said, you know, I'm going to make sure my grandma died, right, make sure she ain't tripping. <laughs> right. So I, you know, I go downstairs, the door is closed. I knock on the door. And when I poke my head through the door, I got a smirk on my face. It's like, man, because I'm not knowing what to expect, right? I just know I got my grandma hot. <laughs> <laughs> Open the door and I poke my head through and her back's to the door and she's looking down. I was like, Grandma, you all right? And she turned around, bro, and she was crying. She tears. She was crying tears. And she was like, I was like, Grandma, you all right? She was like, I'm healed. She's like, you know, I haven't made her read the words of my Bible in over three years. Wow. And I was like, what? And she was like, my, she's like, everything is so bright. I can see again, blah, 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 blah. But she bawling. So I go in there and I hug her and she make me cry. She made me cry. So I'm like all emotional before a game. I'm sitting there and I'm hugging her or whatever. And uh, after that, man, it changed my life, dog. It changed the way I thought about it. I really started doing my own research and homework on it. And I realized like, yo, this is, this is like the world is missing out on this. You know what I'm saying? And to this day, like I still don't know why I was so courageous as to say like I'm all in because I went all in. You know, I put my own money up. I ain't raised no money. I want to do everything myself. You know what I'm saying? But I saw a very unique opportunity to help a lot of people, man. And, you know, change a lot of people's lives. You know what I'm saying? From a health and wellness standpoint. You know what I'm saying? And that was the initial, was my first passionate inspiration. And then after that, I realized that, oh, this is a, also a great business opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then I learned the business. Then once I learned the business, I realized like, oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> then I, I realized, oh, snap, I'm the only black person in the game. Yes, and that, that was where I was gonna go to next because it, one, the, just the cost as far as licensing and all of that, a lot of us, we can't afford that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, obviously, you know, you're, you're blessed to have been in yep. the NBA and you get NBA money, but we we had to take the, 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 the brunt of the, 
the negative, getting arrested, you know, being taken away from our, our families, and you come home and you can't work because you got ch all type of charges. And now we ain't gonna be able to make no Facts. money for the most part off of a, a, a business that you created know on our backs, bro. Yeah. We, pi we pioneered this space. We pioneered yeah. this industry. You know what I'm saying? It's very unfortunate that that's the way it's looking. But you know, that's where, you know, for me, like that's now the new focus of our company. You know what I'm saying? We're changing our company. You know, uh, state uh, Michigan State Mayor to one flower at a time, one community at a time. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna start. You know, we're gonna start. Um, taking revenue back, you know, uh, giving it back to, you know, our Viola Cares Foundation, which will reinvest in our communities. And, you know, first we want to do is we want to help our fathers. You know what I'm saying? We want to expunge their records. We want to be able to get them to the point where they can, um, you know, be able to work and invest mm -hmm. in the industry again. You understand what I'm saying? And we want to work with our youth. You know what I'm saying? We want to let our young, our youth come up knowing too, like, this plant is now good. Yeah. This plant now provides an opportunity for you to take care of your family in a major, major way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is a very good paying industry. You know what I'm saying? And we need to let our youth know that this is now another opportunity for them to participate in. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's up to companies like myself and even some of these other companies that are established that with, with owners that don't look like us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think it's a responsibility even for them to give back. You know what I'm saying? Let's yeah. create incubator programs. Let's teach people how to participate in the industry. You know what I'm saying? And not only with jobs. Like, jobs is cool, but we've been having jobs forever. I want ownership. I want my right. people yeah. to own something. You know what I'm saying? And we can create opportunities with white labeling. Yeah, you right. Job, yeah, exactly. Anything. Like we, you know, we can we can white label brands. You know what I'm saying? You guys, you guys are our brand. You guys can get together, create packaging, create a story. You got a narrative. You know what I'm saying? And y'all got a fan base. You know what I'm saying? So what I want is I want you two brothers to come to me at my facility, and you use my license to push your brand out. You know what I'm saying? Now you own your company. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because this is gonna come down just like how I did with liquor, right? Liquor, is, I think there's over 40,000 brands in liquor. Yeah. It's all levels. There's the top shelf, the middle shelf. Well, mm -hmm. Cannabis is gonna be the same thing. You know what I'm saying? You gonna have people that can't spend more than $5 a gram. You have people that can spend $100 a yeah. gram. So between five and 100, there's a lot of opportunity for a lot of different people. And you know, and I tell people all the time, it's not always about the million dollar exit either. You know what I'm yeah. saying? All I'm saying is if I could take somebody brand that makes uh, barbecue sauce, you know what I'm saying? They've been making out their kitchen forever and they got a fan base, all the people at the church and everybody buy it. And this is a great barbecue sauce. I want to be able to take that barbecue sauce in my company and distribute it for you. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And just say, maybe you only make three, four hundred thousand dollars a year. But that's great, even for an owner, to own a company and say you yeah, made three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars a year. <laughs> You understand what I'm Sign saying? So, so I look at it like I want to help the small and the big. Like you ain't got to be the biggest brand for you to, you know, yeah. come under my umbrella. You know what I'm saying? So, that's what we are focusing our company on moving forward. And like I said, we want Viola to be, you know, you know, 20 years from now as being that brand where people be like, yo, they create a lot of opportunity for a lot of people. Do you do you get into strands and do you have your own strand? Yeah, so we have, so we, 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 we've done some R&D and, you know, we've been breeding some different stuff that we're going to launch in 2020 or whatever. Nice. Um, you know, most of our stuff is in Colorado. You can't move stuff across state lines and yeah, stuff right. like yeah, that. So that's, that's it makes it it makes it makes difficult, you know what I'm saying, sometimes. But, you know, we have some staples or whatever that, yeah. you know, that we do have everywhere or whatever. And, you know, we're just going to keep getting better at that. You know what I'm saying? We want to eventually get to that point, like, where it's just this is the Viola OG, this is the Viola Sour, this is the Viola this, the Viola that. And it's because it's some form of a special blend that's, 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 that's what's that sucked we own. That's what the cannabis convention in New York. Uh, the Javits Center, they could, you know, obviously you can't bring the marijuana, so the only thing they had was they had like oils and they had creams and they had like some gummies. Mm -hmm. But as far as actual strands of marijuana, obviously they didn't, they didn't have that. There. Right, right. I was trying to see, you know, what they have. I just yeah, know yeah, it. right. Just see what's going Check on. But well, you know, all the strains is in Cali. You yeah. know, for the most part, you know what I'm saying? I mean, there's strains they everywhere. Yeah, no, nah, they do got but, some. I mean, you know, one thing I got to get yeah. in my repertoire, I don't have no hazes. You gotta go to the Heights. Yeah, I need a haze. You gotta go to the Heights. So if y'all got a plug for me to get a haze, dog, I need a haze bad. Let me, let me, let me see. Bring a phone call. Yeah, we gonna talk about that. Hold on a minute. We trying to stay on the air. I can't give you that right now. I talked to somebody. I know somebody. I know somebody. I know somebody. Know somebody. Know somebody. Yeah, right. I said put in the call. Yeah, That's respect, respect. Oh man. Right. No, no, no. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no, but um, so. 
Are you so are you, your, so your children are, are are involved in the in the business, or are you preparing them to to be involved in it? Yeah, so not that I'm preparing them to be into it, but uh, in the business. But you know, I would love that kind of legacy that you know my kids come behind me and run the company or work within the company. Let's just say mm -hmm. the company that they own, right? That'd be dope. But um, you know, the one thing I realized was just like I grew up as being the oldest, right? So mm -hmm. being the oldest, my dad died at eight, so my mom. Uh, exposed me to a lot at a young age, right? That forced me to grow up quick, right? And for me, I feel like it made me, a, it allowed me to transition into adulthood a lot quicker because I knew. Yeah. It wasn't green. It wasn't like, oh, Santa at 14 years old. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I don't want my kids, I don't want no kids like that. I want my kids hip, know what's up with current events. This is the world we live in. You know what yeah. I'm saying? This is how our president act. This is how they supposed to act. This is how people, you know what I'm saying? So my kids, for me, like my kids know I smoke weed. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They see me smoke weed. It's not something that I hide from them. You understand what I'm saying? And, um, you know, at first I did, right, until they caught me. Right? <laughs> so they caught me and, you know, it put me in a spot where I was like, either I lie to them yeah. Well, I tell you them the truth. Lie. You gotta tell them the truth. Yeah. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So I literally sat there and I talked to them, and you know they thought I was smoking cigarettes, right? Of course. So you know my oldest, and I think she was maybe six at the time. She was six and four at that time, and she's like, "Daddy, you gonna get cancer and this?" And I'm like, "No, nah, that's not what Daddy has. This is Daddy's medicine. It's a plant. I showed her. <laughs> I showed it to him. I had it in the jar. Yeah. I was like, you know, this is what it is. This is like, you know, Daddy could grow this outside. It's something that's natural. This, that, and third. Then I tell them about the story. You know." Is your grandma, is your great grandma's name, you know, grandma couldn't see, and I gave him the whole story, right? So, you know, <laughs> we've had one or two conversations, but not a lot. But last year, towards the end of the year, first time ever, I took my oldest on a um, on a field trip at school, right? So she's nine at the time. And took on a field trip and whatever, I was on a business call the whole time. So they <laughs> running around on the call the whole time, whatever. So the next day, um, she she comes home from school the following day, and she's like, Dad, everybody, all the boys at school were saying that you're a drug dealer or whatever wow. because they Googled me yeah, or whatever, right? And I was like, well, what did you tell them? And she's like, I told them that you're not a drug dealer. This is medicine. Like, you grow medicine, <laughs> and this is our grandma's company. Because wow. she was ready, and she was able to be empowered and be right. confident having that conversation and not sitting looking at, what's a drug dealer? And, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So for me, like, in that instance, I feel like I won because my Absolutely. daughter, she knew what time it was. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Nobody so can't just feed her head the can you know what I'm saying? And, and I'm a firm believer, like, you know, my mom never said to me, like, you ever want to do a drug, come do it with me. You know what I'm saying? She never said that. But, yeah. you know, I think it's something to be said that, you know, if your kids are going to have these type of experiences, you want them to have them in a safe environment, oh, not yeah. hiding okay. and all no, that I'm kind of stuff. Something can happen. Learn something from someone else. crazy can happen. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. I just feel like I'm laying the groundwork with my kids that, any of that they want to do, yeah. just come talk to daddy about There's it. There's a chance that they're going to try something at yeah, some point. Yeah, they are. I mean, I live in, where I live at in L.A., like, they do drugs out there, hard yeah. drugs. You understand what I'm saying? Like, and I know that reality, you know what I'm saying? But I don't want her going into school and seeing a white powdery substance and she don't yeah. know. What's, what, yeah, she nah, they going to know what yeah. that is, and that ain't it. That's not the one you You know what I'm saying? Like, no. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? So I'm big on, like, having those conversations, them real conversations with kids, because they're growing up too fast, man. That yeah. phone... Like, right. that phone is it, making them grow up too fast. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't have that conversation, then that's somebody on that phone controlling yeah. that narrative. And I'm a firm with it. I want, I want to control the narrative in my house. So, I, you know, I talk to them about everything, bro. And you, you said they thought you were smoking a cigarette. So is that, so are you a, you a, 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 a raw paper joint kind of fellow <laughs> or you backwards dutches or, or, or straight gas mask? I'm a raw guy. <laughs> I'm a raw papers. Uh, I like joints. Okay. Um, you know, obviously when I'm with, with the homies like Steven Jackson and them, um, they like oh, to smoke. Shout out to Steven Jackson. Too, I was going to ask yeah. you about, about Jack, Jack. Jack, Jack, a backwoods smoker. He used to be I, hella I, I, swisher. Yeah, yeah. Then he'd go to Cones. Do you use Fonto never... or not? In, in, huh? Do you use Fonto with the raw paper? Nah, not yet. Right. They always they always talk, they always talking to me about doing something exclusive with them, but I haven't had a chance to really sit down and do something. Now Jackson, uh, Matt Barnes, yep. they they got a new podcast coming out yep. called All the Smoke. All the Smoke. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm sure you're gonna be a guest on it. <laughs> yeah, so it's on. funny. So it's funny. It took off, right? So I'm gonna have to get on my brothers, but they were supposed to do All the Smoke with Viola. It was supposed to be a Viola podcast shot at my office and all that, right? So what we did was we started seeding 
little different shows just on live, okay. right? And it became really popular. And somebody from Showtime called or whatever. So they got a deal on Showtime right. yeah. or whatever. So it took it to another level before we even got it out. Right. But um, obviously, I'm going to do all the sponsorship on it. You know what I'm saying? Nice. Viola be everywhere on it. Steven Jackson aware at it all time. Matt has his own brand called Seven Leaves that I think that we'll eventually do like some type of collaboration. You know what I'm okay. saying? But uh, I'm excited for them. I'm happy for them. You know what I'm saying? They uh, things gonna be good for TV. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I told them so like too. the goal of it. Like I wanted to, if you know, if I have say so on it, I wanted to look like a trapped out sports yeah. center. You know what I'm saying? I, I like think, that's I how it should. Yeah, that's how yeah. it should look. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna do very well. I mean, you obviously know them way better than any of us do, but they seem like two genuine dudes. Right. Like you know what I'm saying? I, I'm I'm watching Stephen Jackson live all the time, and. Right. and the knowledge he's kicking, everything he's talking about is very genuine. Yeah. So I'm sure getting them two in a room together and just breaking down different topics while actually breaking down, right. it's going to be crazy. No, it's going to be hilarious. Yeah. And Matt's very funny. Like, he's a witty kind of, yeah. you know. You and know. Everybody, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of smoke in the air. Oh, That's what man, I'm saying. So much smoke, yeah. bro. It's going to be, it's so going to be fun. I can't wait let, to see let, it. Let me know. I might, you know, want to pull up and check on y'all. Make <laughs> right. sure everything is flowing and what not how it's supposed to go. You know, I think, you know. Right. I now I told him, man, at the end of the day, bro, like for real though, but I told them like on some like to keep it real, like y'all got to be the guests on the show. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you got to tap in, bro. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like tap into the real dudes that been doing this. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they they, they got fan base too, bro. You know what I'm saying? Let's show them some love. You know what nah, I'm saying? I think, so, I think it's, it's going to be dope. Now nah, they going to do that. I'm saying like you're going to see like it's going to be it's going to be guests that you don't Think, yeah, you know what I'm right. saying? Right. Like, right. yeah, they're going to they gonna get the real people, like real people that really talk it, like how y'all yeah. talk it. Like, you know, I think that's what's going to make it authentic. And I think that's why everybody's going to support it because it's going to be, once again, they're going to be able to take on people, the fans, going to be able to take ownership in it. Like, yo, this right. is yeah. really for us, bro. For the people, yeah. This, right. ain't, this ain't sports center. Like, right. This is right. for yeah. us. And those are, those, are, those are two guys that the people, like, genuinely gravitate to. Like, just from watching them and, and seeing them in different spaces, like, people genuinely, like, like Steven Jackson and, and Matt Barnes. They rock with them, so. Yep, no, it's gonna be it, good. I can't wait to go. see the first yeah. show. That's just gonna be crazy. Now, Viola Extracts, what, what can we expect in the coming years moving forward with the company? Uh, so, right now, we are looking at expansion. So, um, you know, right now, we're in four states. We're in Colorado, California, um, Oregon and Michigan or whatever. Um, we, uh, we applied in Maryland, Illinois, and New Jersey right now. So we're waiting to find out if we win those licenses uh, right now. New York, I gotta get New York. Like oh, I got right. to get New York, bro. Like it's like we pulling out all the stops to get New York. But they taking they they, they taking a long man for for recreational purposes. Well, what you know what's what's happening, man? You gotta so your politicians are fighting for the people. Believe yeah. it or not, you know what I'm saying. They they're trying to they're trying to make sure that there's uh, there's meaningful diversity in the beginning, which a lot yeah. of states don't do. Because a lot of states, what they do is they allow the others to come in, mm. get all the big licenses, mm -hmm. set up these crazy operations, give them two, three year head start, and then and say, then okay, now, now let's let, let the minorities get in. Now let them get take these crumbs here when it's too late. You yeah. know what I'm saying? When and they give us these small micro business licenses and all that kind of stuff, like yep. micro business licenses, I can't. The big man, he gonna dictate the pricing, yeah. so I can't even charge you. I can't even charge what it really. You know so what I'm saying? With it, yeah. I can't. I'm stuck. You, you know what I'm saying? You, you so what? So what? New York is trying to do, man. They're trying to do it the right way, and I, 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 you know, I take my hat off, and you know, it was that, and then one of the other things was the way that the governor was gonna actually spend the tax revenue money, because once again, mm. the politicians they woke. And they yeah. realize, and they like, look, this money it's, it's needs to go back into the community first, not to all this other programs y'all got. Yeah, it needs to go back to all the people that was mostly affected by the war on drugs. Right. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So I, I respect I'm them for that, and happening. you know that's what that's what the pro, that's what one of the issues are, yeah. and that's why a lot of these conglomerate companies are now calling companies like myself that are mm -hmm. black owned and operated and saying, hey guys. Let's figure out how we can work yeah. with you and help you guys figure New York out because the program's not going to go forward for them because that's where all the money's going to be for them, right? It's not medicinal because if you look at, I think, in, in, in uh, New York, I don't think it's 100,000 patients yet, which is nothing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Compared to other places, it's yeah. 
hundreds of thousands of patients. Yeah. So you need recreational in New York just to be able that's, to make some money. Yeah, that's, right? that's, that's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so they like, yeah, we got these medical licenses, cool, it's a shiny thing, but I can't get no bread off right. of it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It has to go wreck. So until, like I said, until you know there's proper representation, you know what I'm they, saying, in the industry, they're not gonna move it forward. When I went to the cannabis convention, they were saying that it was kind of a battle between upstate and then New York City. Mm -hmm. So whereas, you know, they kind of want it faster here, right. but upstate. So they were taking, uh, the guy told me they were taking buses up to Albany every day, every morning. They driving up, coming back, going back again um, until they finally got, got medical approved and then they, they're, they're still on it now to, to right. get the recreation approved. In New York. I mean, at the end of the day, there's pockets of the community that don't like it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So right. like, in, so in Long Island, like, there's not a lot of support for cannabis yeah. in Long Island. Like the whole island for except the most on part. The college campus. You know, except for the college campus. You know, except for the right. <laughs> and then, then the other thing about New York is, you know, since it's such a melting pot, like there's literally communities that this is an Asian community, right? They yeah. dominate that community. Like yes. the Asians don't want no part of cannabis. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? So there's a lot of that going on within the state as well, mm -hmm. where there's like some people for right. it, some people against it. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of things they got to clean up. I think that um, I think that rec will be passed in 24 months. I don't think it'll be next year just because everybody's in election next year. Yeah. So, so everybody's going to be right, doing whatever's yeah. pri whatever's uh, going to get them reelected. Yeah, right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. I just don't see cannabis being a priority in New York for next right. year. But I yeah. think the year after that, especially once Illinois goes on online and New York has a little thing with Illinois or whatever. So when they see that program started, that tax revenue come in yeah. and different things like that, I think people will look at it differently. And like I said, I think within 24 months is when New Yorkers start going down that path. They blew the numbers out, like out of the water as far as uh, what was projected, the, the the revenue and what was actually made. It, it's, it's, it's crazy. So you, it's like you you have to. Like it's so much money to to be made. Why why are we waiting this long? Right, and it's a health and wellness part of it too. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and that and that's you know what I'm saying. You got the money side, but it's the health and wellness side, man. Why can't people live a healthier lifestyle? Why can't they make a Why can't they make a healthier choice? Still the yeah, you know what I'm saying. And that's something I think that they need to start teaching in schools uh, the, the 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 health. The, right. the, you know, things that you can use marijuana for outside of, yeah, okay, you can get high. Right. But it actually can be beneficial towards healing your body right. and, and healing you, you mentally. Yeah. You know, I know my, my aunt, she passed away a couple of years ago from cancer, but the only thing that would get, she couldn't eat, she couldn't do anything until she, she had to smoke. Right. And and that was it. So, I, you know, I know it's definitely a lot of health benefits, but as as a collective, we just don't know because we're not taught that. We're, we've been taught so long about like you said it's the gateway drug right. and it's the, you're going to go to jail and th and this is this, you know so we we have to be retaught yeah as far as the, reboot, the, 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 reboot the, the system yeah Word it up <coughs> if we can if we can do that you know i think we'll be good but hopefully you said two years i mean I'm, well, we're moving in the right direction yeah so. yeah we're moving in the right direction like i said i think that they definitely holding it up for they have some good reasons why they holding this thing up you know what i'm saying and you know i'm like obviously i'm with them like you know Give us our licenses, bro. Yeah. Let us compete. We're not asking y'all, like, we're not asking you to give us. Just give us, let's get that opportunity. Yeah. Right. We'll compete. We'll compete with anybody. You know it's, what I'm saying? It's definitely a lot done here, because I know the guy told me 1.5 million is what it would take to uh, to start something here. Yeah. So that It's expensive, you, man. Yeah, you got to get your money here. Or you got to get a good team of investors yeah. together. I mean, but th those licenses that they got now was over $5 million. So, so you ain't got no wins, man. Yeah. You ain't getting Word. them big checks. So you, know, you got a corporate sponsor. It, right. It's going to be tough. <laughs> yeah. For so sure. you got you definitely got to get that. And I, now you, you you did mention the political thing. I don't want to get too much into politics, um, but I mean you know the guy we got in office right now. Mm -hmm. um, he's he's had his back and forth with LeBron with Steph. Um, if if you were on a on a championship team right now, would you go to the White House? Um, probably not. I probably wouldn't go. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I know I wouldn't go either. <laughs> either. Uh, if, if my, I chill. I mean, man, Barack was still up in there. Yeah, it's, it's just it's just a different vibe in there anyway. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like he just he's created a different vibe where like yeah. it's not the same thing, right? Yeah. So before it was like exciting to go yeah. and you meet the honor. president. You know what I'm saying? Big time honor, yeah. Being that he's not as popular, it's just not the same. It's just like it's gonna come up with so much backlash. It, it ruins the whole energy of what you're going there for. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. 
I, I would just pass on it. You know what I'm saying? But you know, if the team went, if everybody, we, you know, I'm a team guy. I'm a family guy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm one. You know, it's good for you. It's good for me. You know what I'm saying? So if a team we decide to go, as a collective, let's go. If y'all don't want to go. I ain't yeah. going either. Nice you know what I'm saying? Right. I want to know. I ain't going. I ain't going to be the only one to go. Yeah, only go with two look, dudes. Look, look, look at Al up there. Yeah, yeah I ain't so, that guy. Yeah. I'm like, we all going. There ain't nobody. Yeah. Going. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I don't know. I, I think a lot of that stuff, man, is just like BS anyway. You know what I'm saying? I think there's other real issues we could be talking about and, and, and yeah. explore. You know what I'm saying? Than that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, I've just come now, like since I've been retiring, I've been living in LA for a while, and um, I've been, you know. I've been hanging out with Black Panthers, believe it or not, like just really, just like really helped me learn my history and like where, who I really am. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Black Panther right here on the set. Nah, right? it's real, bro. Right, like, right it's, behind the camera, my yeah. pop right there. Pop. Yes, sir. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, just getting that knowledge and just really learning who we really are. Like, you know, yeah. like we really a cold, cold, cold community, bro. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we cold, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And if we ever put it together, Nobody can stop us, bro. You know what I'm saying? So now that I'm of that mindset, we built this. yeah, we built it. Like all, of, like everything <laughs> so, was built on our back, yeah, bro. So, you know, every it's industry, too much we can't do. We just every, gotta be every industry, bro. Every yeah. industry, you yeah. know. So it's just like we got to figure it out, man. We got to figure out how to work together, man. And with this cannabis thing, is one that I, I really you know, I have a passion for. I want to find a way to put us all together, right. create yeah. this one conglomerate, and everybody can eat. Yeah. Everybody can eat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They t they're telling us that we got to wrap up, but I can't. we can't end this off until we talk about 2K. Okay. All right. Now, uh -oh. two, two, two questions. One, are you, are you good? And two, what was, what was it like being on the game for the first time? And did you use yourself, even if you weren't like a 90 overall, would you be like, nah, I'm still using myself in the game? See, or you went for who was the best player? I'm going to really kill y'all. Y'all going to hate this. Y'all going to hate my answer. Let's, let's hear it. Y'all going to hate it. Bro. I haven't played video games since Sega Genesis. Oh man! Oh, so you were still playing live? He, he alive? He, he I wasn't playing. I ain't played. He was playing Bulls versus Blazers. Oh. Right now, was, was it live that came on Genesis? Yeah, I think yeah, it was live. Live was, was on there. Yeah. Yep. Dang. Bro, I had, yo, you know what happened for me, bro? It was too many buttons. <laughs> they had the four buttons and the two buttons yeah. and this like, and the no, thumbs man, I, can't, and, I can't do this no yeah, more. Yeah, man. It's like I can't drive a stick shift. Like, oh, I, just, man. I need something simple, bro. But what <laughs> you know what Cause wait, because when you got, you know, when you got your strands, when you got the Viola out, you might want to have that and then play. That never, you never had was like, let me bro, go. I know, and I'm telling you, and then all the guys always wanted to play with me, they was cold. Oh, so, so it was like, they and was they wasn't cutting you yeah. no slack. Yeah, all. so it was like, I, yeah. to, I can't play them. They know how to play with eight buttons. I only know how to play with the pass <laughs> right. and the shoot. They crossing <laughs> over and all moves. I can't Drop do none of that. Yeah. So, like, bro, I promise you. And I hate it, too, because I wish I played video games. Because this time I'm sitting there, and I'm like, I love to turn on the video game and play Fortnite or yeah. whatever. Like, I just, I ain't got it, bro. Well, so, I, w I would, so I would, I killed it. I'm I would sorry. definitely, uh, like to invite you out because we have our we have our fourth annual uh, charity 2K tournament this December. Okay. Uh, the final is gonna be at the Barclays Center on December 14th, oh, that's dope. which is Anthony Mason's birthday, and uh, we're working with Family on Three, which is Anthony Mason Jr.'s charity. Right. So we're gonna be honoring them, and we're gonna be honoring Anthony Mason um, at the event. So you definitely, if you're gonna be in the New York area, you're more than welcome to. Uh, no, no, I appreciate to pull up, to that. Pull up. Thanks, bro. For sure, man. Just don't set me up, so I give my. Nah, 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 we're nah, gonna have you play. We're gonna have you coming out to have a good time, man. <laughs> That's it. You're yeah. coming out to have a good time, man. That's I don't right. like losing, bro. Nah. Really quickly, before we go, we, we talked about NBA teams earlier. Early prediction, who, who would you take this year to win it all? I know you talked about the Lakers probably being your, your number one team. Do you think they're taking it all? I'm going to go, yeah, I'm not going against LeBron, bro. My man, see this is what we're talking about, and I tell Fair him, enough. I told him, I'm, 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 I hate the Lakers, but I'm under contract for four years. Right. Once the go, you got a four year deal with Buddy. Yeah. You only got three left. I got yeah, that's three left, <laughs> and I'm good, you know, and I'm up out here. And unless, unless you know, Bronny got one more year, and LeBron, like, I'm gonna stay one more, then I will sign a one year deal, right, right. To stay for another year. <laughs> but outside of that, I'm I thought you said there. Brooklyn. No, no, yeah, because I'm from Brooklyn, so that's Thank just you. always a home. You see the struggle here. Well, LeBron, man, I got to support LeBron. You see the struggle. He one of those. Oh you see the struggle, God. man. Listen, I'm from Brooklyn, so I support the Nets, but LeBron is my favorite player. Okay. And at the end, of the, I look at it like this: the Nets Trip, are going to be no a franchise. The LeBron Trip. only got a couple more years left in the league, so I got to support him. Trip, try to copy. You're going to embrace the greats. That's what you got to do. I, I, embrace I, so the listen, greats, bro. So as soon as KD get back and we ready to rock and roll, it's going to be full throttle. We out, man. Over, you know. 
You but, just confused everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, <I'm, laughs> so who the t- no, <laughs> Right, right. It's a massive confusion up here, man. Listen, I'm, I'm out here, man. Listen, we, we, about, we, we about to wrap it up. We're going to really quick get into the final thought. Out. Just uh, let them know uh, where they can catch you at. Social media or whatever. Websites, right. everything. Yeah, yeah. So my social is uh, Al Harrington 3. Um, at Al Harrington 3. Uh, the company is at Viola. Uh, CBD line is at Replay Hemp. Um, and then our websites is uh, violabrands.com and then replayhemp.com. Check us out. Check it. So we, we definitely, we check definitely the website now. See what you got up there. Yeah, for sure. And see what I got to see what's going on, man. See, check the strands or whatever what yeah. you got up there. We revamping the website for the strands and all that's all coming. Right. Up. That's what I like to hear. Twenty twenty is gonna be on. There you go. All right, man. So listen, man. For myself, Trip Young, Legend in Two Games, and the Legend Al Harrington. We will see you guys next week. We're gonna be back live, man. Peace.